Hello everybody and welcome to the latest in our ongoing series of history revision notes and today we're continuing with the first year stuff and what we're doing is we're looking at the Celts. Now what we're looking at when you look at the Celts is that you're understanding that this is coming straight after the Neolithic and Mesolithic periods that we studied in previous videos and we're moving on slightly again from the Bronze Age. So as we said when we're talking about things like the Celts and we're talking about the progression over a couple of hundred to a thousand years between the Mesolithic and the Neolithic and the Bronze Age to the Iron Age and to the Celts, that for this period of a few thousand years, there's very little changes in between. That these changes are very gradual, but very, very important. So the way these changes are gradual, but still relevant, think of it as the changes between iPhones just enough to make it worthwhile and just enough to make it life that bit easier so what we do know about the Celts is contrary to popular belief and contrary to what you kind of see in modern you know telling of it in the modern media that the Celts weren't native Irish despite the way we're what we're told and when we associate the Celts we talk about our Celtic nations you know you have Scotland you have Ireland you have Wales but in fact what archaeological evidence tells us is that the Celtic nations grew and developed from Germany, Austria, Switzerland and France. So it wasn't just Britain in terms of Wales and Scotland, but also we're looking at mainland Europe here. So this is more evidence of interaction and more evidence of travel and trade between Ireland itself and the other European countries around the time. So they were the traditional mix of warriors and farmers. And then there was this belief that the Celts had invaded Ireland and conquered the Bronze Age people. Now, two reasons this would have happened. First of all, we've moved on from bronze and you would have had the Celts using iron, which was much stronger, much more durable, and therefore lasted longer. So their weapons would have been better than the, than the Bronze Age people. Also, that we know that the Celts are a warrior tribe and what's left behind, as well as this warrior tribe, is that we seem to have the Celts completely taking over and Celtic influence, Celtic design, Celtic crafts, Celtic settlement, settlements are all here. So we know this is because by 300 BC, the Celts had certainly arrived in Ireland. Now, if you're looking at this, guys, okay, what you must remember for Junior Cert history is that you'd be looking at this in either the question between the questions one and four. So if it's the question one and two, you'd be looking to identify a couple of settlements and recognize the pictures, which we'll get to later. Question three, obviously enough, we'd have the short questions. And question four then is the people in history. And the people in history, you have a couple of sources on how we have a look at this and how we examine this. So when you're writing that people in history, you have archaeological evidence, you have documentary evidence, you have the Breton laws, which we'll have a look at. And then you can also point out some Celtic legends, like on Tornbow Quilina. Okay? So the interesting thing about this is it's an early epic from early Irish literature, and it's called the Irish Iliad. It's based off the kind of Icelandic and, you know, Viking sagas as well. And it translates as the Cattle Raid of Cooley. And it's probably the most famous tale in Irish mythology. And it's the Rurik as well in Ulster. All about Queen Maeve, but again, it gives us an idea of what it was like in the times of the Celts. Now, the Breton Laws. So the Breton Laws as well, when we're talking about this, and if you're looking at this specific as a people in history, is an interesting one. You, talk, you can talk about each of these laws individually, to buff out your people in history answer, to give it a proper... I suppose proper attention and to do it properly but also what you can cite is by looking at these Breton laws is how advanced the Celts were compared to the modern Irish and a lot of other tribes so yes the Breton laws were the Celtic system of justice again we're talking about prehistory here and we're talking about an era where literacy and the ability to read and write was very very low so you had the oral tradition that this was word of mouth and that this was spread throughout Celtic culture the word Breton itself comes from the Brehens who were the judges. So these were the judges who came up with these laws. Now, it was a very, very, as we said, modern and progressive compared 
to the laws that would come along later. So it was focused on the idea of the environment and protecting the environment and protecting those around us and our surroundings because, again, the Celts lived off the land. We know from the idea of Celtic gods that they were based around nature and growth. So because the Celts depended upon their land for everything, they set about ways of protecting that. What we also see is it was so progressive in future thinking and forward thinking that it had equal rights for both men and women. Something again, if you're looking at through the eyes of 2020, watching this video, isn't a given in a lot of places. And you could argue still in Ireland that there are inequalities. And also, it was so progressive that divorce was legal in the Breton times. Okay? Just for context on this to tell you how progressive it was, once, once the Breton laws are abolished by the British during the plantations in around the 17th century, you're looking at divorce being illegal in Ireland again until around 1995. So it's a relatively recent concept of divorce being legal again in Ireland, but the Bretons had this much, much earlier than, than we do here in modern times. No capital punishment. So again, the last execution in Ireland was in the 1930s, but under the Brehan law system, they didn't believe in the idea of executions. There was no police in courts, you know, that it was that it was all revolved around the tribes, that the tribes solved this. There was also the Eric law, but again, this survived for in and around, for, um, in and around that 2,000 years, until it was replaced with plantations. Now, we won't go into that until we do our plantations video later on down the line, but it is interesting to note this forward, progressive, future thinking group. Now, you might be asked to identify the settlements and recognize some pictures of it, which we'll have here. But also, if you're talking about the people in history, you have to mention all these settlements. So the ring forts. So what you have is you have, again, very similar thatched roofs, wattle and daub settlements with farming. The idea of fort means defense. So if you're talking about the purpose of that, you need to mention defense. The word fort itself, it's where it comes from. You had then hills dug into the ground and that the forts were placed high so that they could see from above. This would later be expanded on in the Middle Ages with the idea of the moats. But what's also interesting to look at is if you look at the corner, the right hand side, where it looks like a piece is absolutely cut out of the earth. Now, this is done for just illustration purposes, but it's just to tell you that underground in these ring forts, there were things called souterrains. And what these souterrains did was these souterrains were used as underground escape chambers that if the Celts were under attack and if they needed to get out without being seen, they used these souterrains. As we said, you had these enclosed circular forts surrounded by fences. We still have the timber and wattle and daub fences. We have the idea of the digging a ditch and the houses and the other small buildings inside where they were farmed and lived off the land. Now, while the ring forts would have been used by normal Celts, Crinogues were artificial ones built on, on man-made islands, okay? And crinogues would have been traditionally used by the wealthier Celts. So again, they were lake dwellings, they were fortified, so they were used for defence, okay? You still had the materials like the timber or wattle, you know, fences, and very similar to ring forts, and your only differentiation here is the fact that it was used by the well-off families. You then had your hill forts. Now, this is a common picture question that they like to use here. And our best example is the Hilatara. So hill forts are very, very prominent. You know, very identical to ring forts. The only thing is archaeologists have no evidence of people living there. So what we believe, thanks to, you know, places like the Hilatara and the Navan Fort, which still survive, it's believed that the Celts used this for religious or ceremonial purposes instead. The last one we're going to look at with regards to the Celts is the promontory forts. Now, again, these were seen along the coastline and headlands and cliff edges and it's obvious for this reason why they would have used stone rather than wattle and timber so again we know the fact that it's fort and it's prominentry so prominentry it's prominent it's important it's fort along the coastline used for defense so it can see out or over the horizon over the ships that were coming in if they were to be attacked or indeed anyone who was coming into the country what it also shows us is that you would have because you're on a coastline and because you'd be more exposed to bad weather, 
rather than using thatch and wattle and daub, using stone. It's stronger. Also, if they're being attacked, a stone, you know, fort would be harder to knock down. Examples is we have Dunangus, we have Dingle. And again, there's no evidence that people lived in these forts. You could argue that perhaps because it's the Celts and because it's based off nature, it could also be seen as ceremonial or be seen as religious. The other side of that is most likely because it's in the name fort that it was used for defence and lookout as well. That's all we have on the Celts. Thanks for listening and we'll be back with more videos again soon.